What's going on, Toxic Gamers? The Call of Duty scene is chalked AF right now, and I absolutely mean it. What you're about to see in this video is gonna blow your mind. Suckers are doing do this ASAP max rank in one hour. <laughs> Yeah, guys, we're gonna get into this one. Like the video if you love your mama. Like the video if you love God. Let's go for two likes on the video. Check this one out. Shout out to the homie, Mr. Raffle Waffles. Roll it. Also, a reminder for you before you jump into the match is that you need to have the correct augment equipped that you want to actually level up. There's no point you having a dud bad augment or something queued while you're getting a ton of XP. And XP for augments is not related to the augment or the field upgrade or the perk or the ammo mod itself. It's just related to earning XP in general. So if okay. you want to level up your stamina up augments, for example, you yeah. can turn that on in the research tab, but then you don't even need stamina up in the game. That's totally fine. Mm. You just need as much XP as possible. And my Got recommendation it. is when you start, starting with stam is a really good idea. I'd get one or two there. I'd then maybe get one in deadwire. And then when you have three total augments unlocked, you're going to unlock the ability to start leveling quick revive augments. And I think you should crush quick revive augments for a while like i think that those first couple of quick augments are Done. so huge especially emt i think that one's amazing and dying wish when you get it is insanely powerful so Got that's it. one that is absolutely worth grinding for and so if you can turn quick revive augments on in this game that'll do you a lot of good also okay. last thing before i explain what to do in the match itself here I really recommend putting a suppressor on your weapon, but checking Why? in okay. the suppressor settings. Uh, ¿qué pasa? ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? Whether or not it has the little status effect where it adds salvage drop rate to your weapon, that's going to yeah. be really useful for getting better weapon rarities, which we'll talk about in a moment. So to begin with, spawn into your game and start working on the three amp generators to turn on Pack-a-Punch. You can just play the first couple of rounds normally, or a strat that I like to use to just make... I don't know if Call of Shame is gonna like this one because there's a whole lot of max rank in one hour aspect to it, right? Like XP glitches, this and that. I don't think uh, Call of Shame is gonna like this one, boys. Things all happen a bit faster is to turn on the Rampage Inducer. This is gonna mean that zombies start spawning in, sprinting at you as if they were round 50 zombies. Like it's yeah, gonna yeah, be a yeah, bit yeah. crazy. So keep your wits about you. Yeah. Make sure that you're not just slacking and playing as if you're actually on round one because this is gonna make it feel like round 50. And if you do turn it on and it's too overwhelming for some reason, or you're just like, nah, I just don't want to play at that pace, you can literally just go back to that machine and yeah. hold square on it again, <laughs> and it will yeah. turn off, and the zombies will go back to normal after a few seconds. But while you do all that, and while you work on Pack-a-Punch, which I'll be doing on screen here, I need to quickly tell you about how XP really works in this game. So there's a few facets to how you can get more XP. There's low impact stuff that is not going to make a crazy difference, but is still worth bearing in mind as you play, such as getting medals, and different medals are going to get you different amounts of XP. So as you can see on the screen here, these all have different XP reward amounts. And if I optimized, for example, during my gameplay to get, I don't know, a bunch of multi kills or something, that's yeah. going to earn me a little bit more XP than I would otherwise if I was getting Got those it. kills just individually. So that's Got something it. to keep in mind on the low impact side of things. On the much higher impact side, individual individual kills that are just regular kills to the body of a zombie are going to grant you less XP than kills to the head. It mm. really is important for you to be getting those crit kills. And so anytime you're doing a strat, for example, where you're using a lot of explosives, you're going to earn less XP from that because explosive kills are pretty much half the XP of a critical kill. So okay, you basically why? only ever want to be getting headshots. And if you're not getting a headshot, you're what about knifing? Yeah, knifing in this game is not the same, right? Uh, unless I guess, uh, uh, you hold the melee button and then you can melee which I have only attempted in multiplayer because I'm, I'm so used to like old school zombies where you know zombies would come and I would just knife 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 you would get more points you would get more XP that's how you would uh, I remember you would you would be able to rank up crazy fast in black ops 3 zombies I believe even in black ops 4 zombies right in the very beginning you knife zombies good for the XP also good for the points you would get the most points possible by just knifing but in this one it's very clunky it's weird because you're not knifing you're mailing with your weapon right so it takes time for the animation but I guess if you hold down the melee button then you're gonna pull out the melee I've done it in multiplayer but not yet in zombies though but I guess in this game seconds don't give a damn I guess it's about getting kills fast right and doing the all the the the, the jazz with the medals and crap like that so they turned a lot of the 
zombies aspects into multiplayer, which I'm not a big fan of, not gonna lie. But uh, zombies in this game is kind of growing on me, uh, and it's kind of odd though. It's not the worst thing ever, it's not the best thing ever, but it's growing. So I, I hope uh, they they drop. I hope the future maps are actually good. But let's continue. You're just wasting XP. You're leaving XP on the table. And finally, Headshots, the third yeah. and maybe most important thing, depending on your preferences of weapon XP versus just character progression, is challenges. Now, Wait there are a it. bunch Wait of challenges it. available to you in your barracks when you're in the menus. Some of them are gameplay-based, but others aren't gameplay-based. They're either weapon-based or they might even be things like reticle-based. So you can work on a whole bunch of all these different things to get XP while you're playing just by varying your strategy a little bit, using a different different gun, using a different mm. field upgrade, mm. etc. Okay, mm. so back to the gameplay now. What Got I would it. typically do in a game is I ramp engine juice till maybe like round six or seven or something. And then when things start getting a little bit more hairy, I turn it off and I'll try my best to get myself a weapon upgrade as soon as possible. And this can happen one of two ways. You can either do it on your loadout weapon if you feel like the loadout weapon is one you specifically want to level, or yeah. you can just pick up a gun out of the mystery box or something, which will usually have a higher rarity and it will have an even higher rarity as you go through the rounds as well so you can spin the box later in your game to get higher rarity weapons but yeah if you just want to level your loadout weapon then you can spend your salvage on doing that at the arsenal machine once i've got myself some slightly higher rarity than gray i'd also start thinking about pack a punch tier one i don't typically get pack tier one before i get that first rarity upgrade because i find that the first rarity upgrade just feels like a bigger buff sooner usually yeah but soon as that but but so far this is like common knowledge bro like <laughs> This is common sense. I'm I, I, I'm waiting for the meat, and I've read some comments, and uh, I know there's like the, the the actual content is coming, but this is like common sense though. Uh, but here's the thing: I know common sense is not common anymore, so maybe this is why the homie is explaining right now. But this is common sense stuff. Headshots, yes. Go do the medals, which is new addition, so I guess people need to know. Yeah, do the medals, okay? Headshots, medals. Hey, uh, hey, uh, uh, hey. Pack a bunch of your weapons, okay? Pack a bunch of your weapons. Do deliver the most amount of damage possible. Got it. Now let's get down to the real stuff. That's done. Pack tier one. And then also, we're gonna specifically want to save 500 salvage for Deadwire. And this is gonna come in handy mm. for a little sort of side questy type thing that we- Oh yeah, also if you ever played Black Ops 3 Zombies, they, these seconds changed it. Yeah, <laughs> these seconds changed it. Now you need salvage to buy dead wire it's different it's different it's different so you need to go to one of those machines which I, he already showed and i guess he's gonna show again uh you can pack punch your weapon but you're not gonna get dead wire or any abilities through pack punch pack punch is separate and you can pack punch your weapon three times once it's five thousand i believe second time is 15k third time i guess it's 30k right correct me if i'm wrong but you do that for sure whenever you can but in the very very beginning try to make sure you get dead wire which you need 500 salvage for and you're gonna have that pack punch ability but it's through salvage instead of you pack punching we can start doing in order to make our life a bit easier so once you have dead wire on your weapon activate the incline lift that the pack punch is sitting on and travel from the bottom area the bio lab up to the top and while it's going up look on the right hand side for an electrical box you need to yeah. shoot that electrical box with your dead wire weapon when you do so correctly it'll start sparking and the electricity will then travel to another box that you need to shoot and as i'm mm. showing you in the gameplay here you just need to follow each of the boxes around this building and shoot all of them in turn and Got after it. it's traveled i don't know maybe five or six uh. times something like that it will then land outside this little door here and you can shoot it a final time and then enter this laboratory this is actually the first step of building yourself a free wonder weapon on this map and i've got a full guide for that linked in the corner of the screen right now if you want to check it out and it's also linked in the description the spawns inside this lab are crazy like they are so overwhelming it is actually insane and so maybe you're in a co-op game with a couple of friends and you just want to all come in here sit in the back of the lab and just get flooded by zombies and have really really quick spawns that's a way that you could potentially speed things up a little bit without necessarily having to have rampage inducer on but you could speed your spawns up and therefore get a lot more xp by just shooting those zombies quicker and then you'll also be able to earn a whole load of points there which will let you start getting more pack a punch levels etc however it's gonna get very overwhelming very fast and so i wouldn't hold in there for a crazy amount of time but it can just be useful to do to get a little flavor of what's to come 
come later in this video. And then separate mm. to that, if you're staying legit, what I'd say is it's a really good idea to try and grind through rounds as fast as you can, getting headshots on all of your kills wherever possible. But then also, as you start slowing down in the round progression and you feel like things are just taking a really long time, maybe your weapon... I would also like to add, because in the very beginning, you can choose your loadout, right? So I would say instead of shotguns, I guess in the very beginning, shotguns can be helpful. If not, go with the LMG or try to get an LMG later on because more ammo and you pack punch it, dead wire it, right, with the red dot side on top and then just go crazy with the headshots and you're gonna have more bullets and, you know, more power and yes, that's gonna definitely add into you getting kills faster, ranking up faster and all that, for sure. Weapons are not being effective. That's the point where I'd say you have one of two options. You can either go legit and basically exfil in that moment and my recommendation there would be to use a chopper gunner to ensure that you get through the actual exfil because they can get really hard if you're exfilling past round 30. But your other option once your guns start sucking is for you to start doing this glitch. And the nice thing here is if this does get patched, there will definitely be other similar glitches that you can use in the future and they will still be able to make use of the lab, which means that you've just got transferable knowledge now. Now, for the record, you're only going to be able to start it once you get to around round 16. So any thoughts of you doing it on round four, just put those out of your head right now. We're going to wait till round 16 and then we're going to kick this off. And the reason for that is that the go. amalgam is going to spawn in. That's the boss zombie on the map. This is why you were here. This is why I was here, man. Damn, man. Damn, bro. Like, damn, man. So we went through all the common sense part, which I guess nowadays is not common. Now we're actually getting down to some real business, man. This is the real business, man. We're getting down to it. Like the video if you love your mama. Like the video if you love God, guys. I get. Hopefully, don't tell Activision, though. And don't tell Call of Shame, man. <laughs> but, uh, would you call this, like, cheating or, or no? Because uh, I get, uh, personally, I would not. But you know what I mean, right? But because back, uh, because zombies is different, you're not ruining other people's experience. So in a way, yes, I personally wouldn't. But what about you, though? Would you call this uh, uh, cheating? App. It's very similar to the Nathan mini boss fight that happens in the mid. That's the boss zombie on the map. It's very similar to the Nathan mini boss fight that happens yeah. in the middle of the Easter egg. But these amalgams, thankfully, are a little easier to kill. But in our case, we don't actually want to kill it. What we want to do instead mm. is take out all the other zombies on the map, bar one or two. So keep one or two alive. And they can be runners for now. That's fine. Because we need to bring the amalgam to a specific area on the map underneath the sea tower. And when you go down there towards the docks, you'll find that there is a repel cord directly underneath the tower. Tower, and that's where we need to be. Now, at Ooh, this point, okay. if you can make one of your zombies into a crawler or something, that's going to make your life a bit easier for doing this next bit because it can be a bit fiddly. And there is a chance that you go down while you're doing this just because the amalgam can do a bunch of damage. And if you've got a bunch of zombies alive, then you're at risk. So do be careful. And the strat that you're be trying careful, to execute here is you need to bait the amalgam to grab you with its long arm grab attack. And when it grabs you, you need to spam yeah. interact on the zip line. Now, e this will work both if you've got tap to interact on and if you have hold to interact. I think generally people say hold is a little easier on this one. And timing wise, what we're aiming for is for him to latch onto you the second you latch onto the zip line. Like you're going to just begin your zip line animation and then he's going to grab you and yank you off it. That's kind of the idea. And you'll know whether or not what we're doing has worked correctly because the yank won't do any damage to you you. So if you look in the bottom left corner of your screen and you see yourself take a chunk of armor damage and a chunk of health damage, then yeah. that means that the glitch hasn't worked. But if you don't take any damage, what you'll also notice is that all the zombies start running away from you. And that means we're in business. You now have God mode. Now with great power mm. comes great responsibility. Okay. So now that you have God mode, yeah, okay. I guess you could do some Easter egg stuff or you could hunt for unsolved stuff or things along those lines. But we're obviously focused on XP. So you need to come back to the lab that we opened earlier. And that is the best place to continue the strategy here. So kill that last zombie that you had alive and then sit in the back of the lab. And as we saw before, if you tried this earlier in your game, all the zombies are going to pour out of the windows and it's going to get really crazy, really fast. That's the reason we found this area in the first place. It's one of the fastest spawn 
items in the entire game, and in conjunction with this little glitch, it works super well. And you just need to spray into them perpetually as they pour out. And as you do this, you'll get more and more XP, obviously, from all the headshots that you're getting. Now, there are times where the laboratory... Th this reminds me of the Die Rise wall glitch. I, I remember in Black Ops 2 Zombies, I would do that with my friends. Like, we would uh, just wall glitch in that and just uh, camp it out. And all night long, just eating, talking, chilling, playing. It used to be fun, though. It used to be fun, man. It used to be fun. Spawn will get a bit weird. Like, for example, you might have no zombies appearing for a little bit, and you might be wondering why your round isn't changing. That's probably because you have a mangler somewhere else on the map that you need to take down. It's most likely Brett. not too far away, but if you still have a mangler alive, delete it from existence, and then return to the lab, and you should be able to continue. Got and similarly, it. as you go along in your game and you start getting fewer and fewer points, you're going to want to make sure that you're getting your weapon to max rarity, and also getting your pack-a-punch to max tier as well and if you ever want to yeah, get points wouldn't be an issue afterwards right because you're glitching just like get the kills as fast as possible get the headshots more xp more points and therefore you can pack punch faster gonna you're gonna deliver more damage and then you just need to get ammo back over and over right that's the only thing that you would have to worry about get rid of the god mode but still continue that match you can a punch to max tier as well and if you, you ever want to get rid of the god mode but still continue that match you can just use the save and quit feature and then come back next game and god mode will be erased but if you mm. want to just get as much xp as possible then i'd say as soon as you're ready to end your game you should exfil and you should do it with a chopper gunner to make it a lot easier for you but that'll got mean it. that you just get a little xp got it got it okay well guys take advantage of it and this is how you rank up fast in black ops 6 zombies check out this video on the screen we recently had just insane drama with activision activision actually came out and they confirmed all of this check out this video on the screen if you already seen it then check out the liberty balls easter egg guide on the left and i'll see you there